Huh? Now, well, by using the second derivative test, well, the first thing what we want to do is identify the critical values. So for using the second derivative test, we need to identify the critical values that occur at f prime of x, right? So the first thing we're going to want to do is to find the extreme, where we're going to find f prime of x, which in this case is a negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. We can set that equal to 0. And therefore, just like you know, we want to find, we want to find the values that you know, make that equal to 0. So I'm going to go and factor out a negative 15x squared. When I do that, I'm left with an x squared minus 1. Then I could apply the 0 prog property to solve for x, and then log in my possible critical values. Well, my critical values, which are my possible extrema, are going to equal uh, 0. Well, let's see, critical values are x equals 0, 1, and negative 1. Right? Then, if I was going to use the first derivative test, I would just create a nice little table, f prime of x. And hopefully, this is exactly what you guys did. Just going to go ahead and pick some points. And then you just pick points to the left and to the right of you know, each of those, and you would test them all in. And then again, remember, by the first derivative test, if it changes from positive to negative, the derivative changes from positive to negative, then we know we have a relative maximum. And if it changes from a negative to a positive, then we know we have a relative min, or did I say positive negatives relative max, right? However, to do that, look at what we got to do. We have to plug in one, two, three, four different values into that derivative, determine if it's positive or negative, right? Which can kind of be a little bit crazy, or not really crazy, but for some functions it could be kind of crazy or a lot of work, right? And especially this is relatively simple, but what if we were dealing with a function that was a little bit more complex? We might not want to do that. We might be making some more mistakes. So to apply the second derivative test, all we're simply going to do is take the second derivative. So when we take the second derivative, we have a negative 60x cubed plus 30x. Now, remember what the possible, remember if we set that equal to 0, then we get the possible points of inflection, right? Where the concavity changes, right, from concave down to concave up. However, that's not what we're looking for in this example. They didn't ask for when does, you know, when does the concavity change. That's not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for is determine the extrema. So what we can do is just plug in. At, so we don't need to solve this rex. We don't need to find the possible points of inflection. But remember, if we did, that's what we did last class period is found the possible points of inflection. But what we could do is evaluate for f double prime of negative 1, f double prime of 0, and f double prime of 1. And this is sometimes easier. One, we're doing one less value. And then also, when you take the second derivative, right, you have less, like you have less powers. Sometimes it just becomes a little bit easier. And basically, what we want to do is just kind of determine, um, actually, I'm going to hold that off here. We just want to determine what the value is. And again, we only need to determine if it's positive or negative, right? By the second derivative test, we just want to know is it greater than 0, less than 0, or equal to 0? So, kind of like the first derivative test, we just care about um, the sign. So if I plug in negative 1 into here, well, negative 1 cubed is negative times a negative is you know, positive. Positive plus a negative. So, so let's actually, so that becomes a negative. That's 60 plus a negative um, 30x. So that's going to be a positive or negative positive. So that's going to be greater than 0. Okay. Then let's go and check in f double prime of 0. So if we go ahead and plug in. Uh, f double prime 0, we plug in a 0 and 0. Uh-oh, we're equal to 0. And remember, by the second derivative test, if it's equal to 0, we've got to go back to the first derivative test. And then let's do f of 1. If I plug in 1 here, I get a negative, minus, uh, plus the, a negative 60 plus 30, which is going to be less than 0. So my justification, which I'm going to want to write here, is it's a little bit easier, a little bit quicker than, um, than the first derivative test. So we could say since f double prime and negative 1 is greater than 0, f has a local max at x equals 1. And since f double prime of positive 1 is less than 0, f has a local min at x equals 1. Now, what about 0? What's happening? Do we have a max or min at 0? 
Well, the first, second derivative test doesn't tell us that. It just says you can't determine what is happening at 0 with the second derivative test. So what we're going to do is actually have to go back here and determine, are the signs changing when we do this? So let's go ahead and plug in you know, f prime. So we're going to plug it into the f prime of 1 half equals negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. And what do I have? What? I'm going back to the first derivative test. The second derivative test doesn't work for 0 because it's equal to 0. Right? So we have to see, are the signs changing at f of negative 1 half? Did anybody plug in f of negative 1 half into the first derivative? Yes. It's a positive. It's a positive. And the next one's positive. So if we were only doing the first derivative test, we would know that no extrema occurs here, right? Yes? We could look at a vertical, it could be a vertical tangent, or it could be a horizontal tangent. Like it could look something like this, right? Or it could be something like that. Like, but the it's not an extrema. Like it's not changing from positive to negative, right? So at 0, there is no relative extrema. Yes? Since f, uh, oh, I wrote that's negative one. Sorry. When you have, um, think of the concavity, right? Okay. Think of the concavity. So when we have, and we're going to look at some graphs, which I think will probably clear this up. But for right now, if you can just know, when you have, um, when you're f of negative one, just like over there, when it's greater than zero. Wait, did I write f dot prime? Did I write that? It's greater than. Greater than zero. Oh, I wrote that wrong. F negative 1 is greater than 0, so F has a, a local min. Sorry about that. I wrote that. Sorry about that. I switched those around. My bad. Obviously, per the direct test. Right? So I just wrote those down. I'm sorry about that. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, because if you're looking at that, it has a local min because it's, um, it's the concavity is going to be positive. Yeah, so it's concave down. So then it has a max. Sorry about that. 